All right. Hello and welcome to day three of live coverage of the Summer Fancy Food Show, 67th Annual 2023 Summer Fancy Food Show, broadcasting to you live uh, from the Javits Center in New York City, New York. My name is Susan Choi. I'm the Digital Media Director of the Food Institute. We are partnering with SFA to provide you with this live stream coverage of the show. It's been so wonderful these past few days. I hope you've been joining us for the previous days, days one and days two. It's been amazing. This show, I I'm telling you, it's always so exciting, but this year in particular, um, from the sold out exhibitor space to the pop-up pavilions, to the pitch stage, and now, uh, much many more exciting things we have to show for you even though it's the last day it has by no means lessened or waned in excitement we have an action-packed show for you today but first i want to mention i want to give thanks to our um, corporate our corporate sponsors our platinum sponsors atalanta corporation they had a wonderful party last night they know how to party atalanta corp your uh, the country's largest privately held specialty food importer company from meats to cheeses to frozen seafood and beyond they are ready to cater to your specialty food needs as a retailer as a grocery store holder they want to be on your store shelves they want to be a part of every food experience please check them out at atalantacorp.com. And also I wanna give a little plug to the Food Institute. We are a multimedia company that covers food and beverage industry news. We do articles, podcasts, webinars, videos, anything you can think of in the multimedia sphere and including live streams like this. Please check out our website for more information, foodinstitute.com. All right, so I wanna get the show started. I want to mention a really special event that happened last night, a fancy New York pitch slam. It was a joint collaboration by SFA and Naturally New York, a great organization that if you were good viewers, you saw yesterday, Adrian Delicio telling us all about this great organization. This pitch slam um, picked five finalists from a large pool of applicants to present their product, their new product um, to a large audience and to four judges who then picked the winner. And as you can see, as you will see, um, indeed a winner of was chosen and it was such an exciting time. Okay. You oh, sorry. That was the winner over there. And um, we have the winner here with us and I'm so pleased to have him. His name is Neil, um, Neil, De oh no, Neil Discrysic. Neil Discrysic, thank you. You're so kind. You got it, thank you. I I could see, I could see the 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 the, the resigned uh, eyes of yes, uh, yet another million person has gotten my name wrong. Neil describes like of Jazzberry Rice, CEO and co-founder. Neil, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on your win. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, first of all, how do you feel? I feel great. You know, I think it's it's always we we're trying to build a, a global brand, right? And so I think any time that we have a chance to tell our story to the world, like we did yesterday with one thousand people in attendance, it's a wonderful opportunity. Absolutely. All right. So why don't you tell the viewers right now what Jazzberry is? So Jazzberry is actually a new variety of rice with over forty times higher antioxidant than brown rice, seven times more than kale, and four times more than quinoa. It's the world's first superfood rice is now you know available in whole food store nationwide and but really we're not just a rice company what we're trying to build here is a transformation transforming consumers life and by them doing you know purchasing our product they're taking farmers out of poverty and helping restore the planet so really at the heart of it you know while we're trying to make this superfood rice you know making superfood affordable and accessible for everyday life we want to do it in a way that help a lot of people out of poverty. I mean, who could say no to that? That's amazing, amazing, uh, you know, mission, um, ama you know, amazing story. I mean, okay, tell us, you know, tell us how you came up with the concept. Were you yourself, did you yourself grow up on a farm or were you exposed to that? Or did you always just, you had this in mind, you wanted to start a company, you know, to, to make rice better, make the world better. Tell us, tell us your story. Yeah, I think growing up, I I look up to people like um, Nelson Mandela, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. I, I I knew about learning about their life, and I really wanted to live a life of purpose. Since I was little, I was very curious, like why do we exist? Like what are we here for? So I always wanted to live a life of meaning. So I think Jasper is kind of my way of sharing my life with the world. And and yes, it is true. This amazing superfood rice, but 
that on a personal level, it makes me wake up every day with a purpose and fulfillment in life. And I think that's all I can ask for. That's amazing. I love that. And you just actually mentioned, mentioned a point that I hold it true to my heart is, you know, finding your purpose. Mm. It, it's important for us to yeah. do that. You know, yeah. I mean, otherwise we're just going through the motions every day. Right? Mm. And, and I think like mm-hmm. we are truly happy when we give right right and while we're trying to acquire you know resources you know get richer it, it doesn't add to our happiness or fulfillment in life because we're not giving and i think that when we wanted to prove to the world that you know when we see a brand like patagonia uh, we always say jasper will be the patagonia of food one day that's the kind of brand we want to build in this world because I feel like the world needs it. Absolutely. Making an impact on the environment, the community around you, mm. and really rings true as well for SFA. You know, that's what they want to do, the special to the community. You're in the right place. Um, okay, tell us more. I love what you're saying about the farmers. You know, you mm. really are involved in, you know, the sourcing. So tell us more about the farmers that you work with. Yeah, we work really, really closely with them from providing the jasmine rice seed to providing them with different input like organic fertilizer, giving them farm training. So we, we grow rice using 25% less water, 50% less seed with less methane emission. So it's really a full process. And currently we work with 2,500 family, which is about 12,000 people. And we help them to increase their income from just 40 cents a day to almost $6 a day, an increase of 14 times. So that's our impact and we are B Corp certified that's amazing how did you meet the farmers <laughs> I actually uh, I was a student when I started this company okay. and I went to, uh, to to the farmer and I, I said look I'm a student doing research but I always had this idea to create this company this brand but I didn't tell them and I ended up living with them for a year and a half so I work in the farm with them. I wanted to put myself in their shoes to understand their life because I was not born a farmer, right? In fact, I, yeah, I, I mean, I've lived in, in many countries, but I feel like if I want to help these people, I have to be able to see the world from their perspective. Wow. What was it like living with them? It was like, it's hard work, right? It's a lot of hard work. And I, I was, you know, a lot younger, a lot fitter, and, and I... <laughs> And I was struggling. Well, it's not like you're an old man today. Yeah, I was I was struggling physically. <laughs> yeah, I work out in the gym, but this was, and they're in their 60s, you know, some in their 70s, and they're doing this back breaking work. You know, they wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning. It's like I never really woke up that early, you know. Every day they wake up at 4, 4:30, they start going to work. It is crazy that the amount of work they put in, but I think the most profound thing for me was. These people are maybe some of the poorest people I've ever met, but they are have the biggest heart. They're the kindest people. They would smile, they would give me their food, they would share. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And in some way, I always say they're the poorest, but they're the richest in my eyes because they have everything you ever need to be happy in life. So I learned a lot from them. They taught me a lot. It certainly sounds like it. And I want to know how, from that experience, um, how did the superfood, the superfood rice, how did that come about? So actually we work with um, this rice scientist who does natural crossbreeding of rice. And it took him 12 years to create the jasper rice, um, which uh, is non-GMO, it's organic. But basically uh, it has this exceptional nutritional antioxidant property, but also it's delicious uh, despite being 100% whole grain. So it, it's, you know, delicious and it's healthy. That's And that's kind of... I guess that's his legacy to the world as well. And we just brought it out well, to the world. That's amazing. Yeah. And what, when did you start? When did the company launch? Well, we actually launched since um, 2013. Okay. So it's been you know almost 10 years. But I spent you know the first couple of years with the farmer. So really the first couple of years was very um, much about community building, learning about how to build this business model. Mm-hmm. Because we're not, we're not just sourcing stuff. It, this is a unique uh, crop. We have to produce the seed for them. It's a lot of work that goes into it, you know. And, and we only grow jasmine rice once a year. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what an amazing product. Um, um, what a what a what a wonderful win that you had. Um, you know, the Pitchland winner gets you know gets a lot of a lot of 
uh, exposure, and mm. and I it seems like it, the attention, the recognition is well deserved. Thank you, I appreciate uh, thank it. Thank you so much, Neil Deskrizik. <laughs> Neil Deskrizik. You got it. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> First of, what's wrong with my brain this morning? Neil Deskrizik, CEO and co-founder of Jazzberry, a wonderful product, the 2023 Fancy New York Pitch Slam winner. Neil Deskrizik, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. Well, we are going to go now to the. Um, we are going to go now to the to the the a moment a special moment. The Sophie Award winners product of the year, new product of the year. Let's check it out. exciting right there i apologize for my for my frenzy this is the first time we were taking live what an exciting moment we went live to the sophie product of the year and new product of the year award winner announcements and exciting news we're gonna have those very same winners here later on in the show today talking about their big win it's like the oscars of the food industry the sophie awards so exciting uh, buyers were, were, were buyers were uh, sampling some of the finalist products and making their choices over the past few days. So it was particularly exciting to see those announcements that you just saw right now. What a treat. So we'll have those guests on later today for that interview. But let's go right over to Jordan Whiplin, who is on the floor. He is checking out the candy. He's checking out the chocolate. He's checking out the bakery. He's checking out all of these things, working hard tirelessly for you, the viewer, so you can get a scoop of what is happening on the show floor. What do you have for us, Jordan? Good morning, Susan. It's day three of uh, the Specialty Food Association Summer Fancy Food Show. I am at the Sweets and Snacks Pavilion, and though they can be found everywhere around both floors of the Javits, they're at critical mass here today. And thankfully, because I need a little bit of a sugar boost to get that blood sugar up and keep the energy high. So if you come with me this way, we are going to start with a New York-based kettle chip company called the Saucy Ladies. I am with Daniel Malmeister, CFO. Daniel, how goes the show? Tell us about your product. Hi, the show's going great. Um, we have an artisan-quality Italian-inspired kettle chip here. Um, we're from New York, and doing great at the show so far. The saucy ladies themselves have lost their voices. They've been shipping so much product. But Daniel is happy to tell me 
all about their company. So tell me what's going on in, in your sector of the market. How does a kettle chip company stay relevant? What are some of the trends you're seeing and uh, participating in? Okay. We're a woman-owned company. Um, we have custom blended seasonings that are free from all artificial preservatives and artificial colors. Um, we like to take a free from simple approach to our seasonings and to our chip. So it makes uh, for a quality product that everybody loves and is great and healthy for you too. Yeah, the, the trends keep changing, especially post-pandemic, of course. We're in low ingredients, uh, occasionally keto, zero sugar. What are some of the uh, chip trends that uh, you're either featuring here today or, or maybe looking to get into as time moves on? Sure. Uh, all of our chips are gluten-free, which has been a big trend as of late. Um, our newest chip over here is our movie theater butter chip, um, which, um, you know, is uh, all natural butter, has cream in it, is um, free of again, any artificial ingredients. Um, so those are the trends we're trying to hit. We're trying to hit the, you know, top end, high quality, all real ingredients without anything fake in our products. That sounds wonderful. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, foundation of the company? You have quite a name, you have a wonderful logo. It certainly caught our eye. As I said before, it's women owned. Um, it's actually created by the founders of Rayo Specialty Foods, the pasta sauce company. Um, the owner, Sharon, had the idea to come up with the kettle chip that was, again, free from and, and top quality. Um, and then the uh, president and head of sales, Deb, was the head of sales at Rayo's for a number of years. So we kind of just transitioned over to a chip and to a high-quality snack and tried to make a product that everybody loves. I remember the first time I tried kettle chips, it was sort of this flavor explosion. Like, there is another way from the salty potato, you know? Um, are you guys, tell us a little bit about where we can find your product. Sure, we're available in all the Tri-State area airports. Um, we're also available in the Lowe's hotel chains and all of their grab-and-goes. Um, another couple hundred specialty markets and delis across the nation. Um, you can find out more by looking at our website, uh, www.saucyladiesusa.com. And um, be happy to help you find the product if you know you want to contact us. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, Saucy Ladies, and uh, we hope you have a uh, wonderful rest of the show. Thank you. There it is. We are going to continue perfecting the backwards walk. Uh, first seat in Vegas, perfected here. Uh, I don't know if you can see around at all, but you know, snacks of all types, sizes, flavors, textures are with us. Uh, and uh, from New York City down to Georgia, I am with Collier Feinberg, owner of Blackberry Patch. Uh, they make jams, they make jellies, they make preserves, they make a lot more. How goes the show, Collier? show's actually been really good so far. We've been very pleasantly surprised at the turnout and the quality of buyers that we've seen. Always good to have buyers. See your former Sophie winner? Uh, are those the syrups right there? Yes, they are. Um, we won, it, won one in 2014. Um, we came out with our line of three ingredient syrups that just have berries, cane sugar, and lemon juice in them. And then in 2019, we won one for a satsuma syrup, which is, again, just satsuma's cane syrup and lemon juice, which is a very, very versatile product. Where are your products found? You can find them in Publix and Wegmans at um, some uh, Whole Foods, Sprouts. Um, we also have a very, very big private label um, portion of our business, so um, you might see them out there under some different manners. Wonderful. Uh, if you'd like here to show us one uh, or tell us a little bit more about what you have on display, uh, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of went into it a little bit a, a few minutes ago. This is one of our three ingredient syrups. Like I said, this blueberries, cane sugar, and lemon juice. It's a very versatile product that can be used for pancakes, for yogurt and ice cream. You can use it in a cocktail or mocktail for the base of a vinaigrette, for marinating meats. Really about as creative as you can be with the product is about how far you can take it. That's a great way to describe it. It's funny, we've noticed uh, syrups in, in almost every pavilion, as you said, sometimes as part of cocktails, as part of mocktails, as sort of a flavoring ingredient or, or a, a texture added to something else. Uh, syrups come a long way since uh, you and I were growing up. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that COVID kind of took that to a new level with people experimenting from the house, trying to figure out how they, how they can get more creative on their own and apply those just in different ways they never really would have originally thought. Uh, what's your favorite product of what you have? Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those three ingredient syrups. It's this strawberry one right here. It just tastes like strawberries in a bottle. Just drink it. <laughs> we we want to ask you to do that live on camera. But uh, you know, what else are you seeing out here? Or maybe what's coming up next for the Blackberry Patch? Short term, long term? 
Well, we as, as I uh, mentioned earlier, we saw some great buyers. So hopefully you'll see uh, see the product and many, many more shelves in the coming months and into 2024. Um, one of the one more product that I wanted to highlight, we do also make uh, many sugar free, no sugar added offerings. And this allulose uh, item, this uh, maple flavored allulose syrup is one that has 90% less calories than maple syrup. It is, like I said, sugar free. So it's a great alternative for people that still want that sweet treat, but you know, don't have the ability to process the sugar. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Collier uh, Feinberg, owner of Blackberry Patch. Have a wonderful show. Thank you very much. There it is. One more wrap from the sweets and confections show floor, day three of the Specialty Food Association. Back to you, Susan. All right, Jordan, thank you so much. Mm, syrupy sweets. <laughs> Can't wait to try those later on at the show. I believe that was on level three. Uh, we are going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to have more Trend Spotters yeah. Insights, the International Pavilion, plus the Sophie Award winners, new product of the year and product of the year when we come back. Stay with us.
We are back and I am thrilled to have with us our next guest, a lovely and extremely elegant woman. I, I'm, I'm really honored to be in her presence. She is an SFA trend spotter, but she is so much more than that. She heads up, um, it seems like you you had your own, is it a consultation? A no, I have a contract food science and research firm oh, called well, Corvus okay. Blue. The, no, no wonder we have you on the show. <laughs> you know your stuff. This is Kanta Shel Shelke. Kanta Shelke. Kanta Shelke. Um, and we are so pleased to have you on the show. You're clearly an expert on all things food, food science and the food industry. So let's get into it. Let's talk trends. We were chatting a little bit early about what you're noticing. I really want you to share what you shared with me with the viewers. What are you seeing here at the show that is piquing your interest? So when I attend the show, I'm attending as a scientist, food scientist, as a nutritionist, and as one who's also looking at it from a safety point of view, because I do a lot of work in regulations and in litigations. I'm always looking for that little slip or anything that could trip people out. But most of all, I see ingredients. You know, like that little kid who saw dead bodies? I see ingredients. <laughs> I really I do. You just said I do. <laughs> when That's I awesome. see a food, I look at the ingredient, what it does, its history, where it came from, what it can do, and most of all, its functionality and its ability to delight people. Because when you're at the fancy food show, you're looking for specialty foods. Here, people have come from all over the world to look for something that's unique. It's small batch, often artisanal made, with a lot of history and tradition and something modern and new, the science, the skill, and most of all, something they cannot find anywhere else. So it's special. It's a specialty food, but it also makes the person who takes it very, feel very special. And that's an important point. Absolutely. I love what you just said there about what you're looking for. The, you want to know about the ingredients. You want to really investigate. Like it, it makes me think of transparency. That's something that people want now. It's so timely. You know the things that you're looking out for. So tell me, um, you know, what specifically? Um, I, I, we were you were mentioned ginger, right? You were you're really interested that you're seeing that pop up. Tell us more about what you're seeing specifically. Yes. Susan, you're spot on. It's not just transparency; it's also education. People are becoming very aware of what's good for them. They know about ginger, turmeric, cocoa, or oh, chocolate, tea, coffee, and they also know how it is made matters. So they're looking for plant-based, they're looking for fermentation, they're looking at mushrooms, because they know that even a little bit every day can do their body and their soul a lot of good. And that's what we're seeing today. So we're seeing an array of products. We're also seeing the good old cheese that people used to, you know, this is known for cheese and snacks, right? Cheese has come a long way. There's plant-based, there's uniquely made cheese, small batch cheese, cheese from different parts of the world that we never even knew about. And that is absolutely worth the trip. So it's a, it's for me, it's an annual pilgrimage. Now I do it twice a year here and to Las Vegas because I know I will see things here that I will then order because I send food as gifts. And my recipients, young and old, friends and family, students graduating and elsewhere, anybody I want to say thank you to, they know they're going to get something special because I saw it here. Mm, that's great. I love that. I mean, yeah, that, it, the, you, you just nailed it right there. You know, what a wonderful diversity of, of products at the show yeah. um, and, and such, you know, not only in, in different type of food and ingredient, um, but also an in innovation. That yes. must tell me about that. And innovation, how, what are you seeing from where you stand in terms of that? I'm seeing a lot of science. So it's not just people knowing about ingredients, but the exhibitors are also able to talk about ingredients. So we've got in the incubator village just behind us. In fact, there was a young lady who stopped me just as I was coming up saying, here is a, an energy gel or an energy little shot just for women. Because women don't like eating the stuff that guys like to eat for performance. Mm. So she's made this with a taste and with a selection of ingredients and a lot of science to make sure it delivers. That's what we're seeing. So you see products out here, alternates to coffee and tea. You see uh, ready-made because everybody wants a really good food, but they don't have the time to prepare it. Mm. A lot of this can be made at home. Who has the time and who has the skill? 
So what they have done is made everything in a portable, convenient, affordable format. That's what makes specialty food shows such a great place to be because you don't see this anywhere else. You really don't see this anywhere else. You know, that product you just mentioned does sound very interesting, the energy gels for women. It's very true, identifying a problem and then trying to solve it. So men, yes. men and women, they're very different in taste and yes. women, don't, they don't, I, I know, I see those guys with the, I, I, and I'm like, I, what is that? I yes. don't want to eat yes. that. So that's what I, I'm seeing too and what I'm hearing as well. It's like products, they solve a certain problem. And would you say that in this uh, landscape economy, if you will, of goods, do you think uh, Kanta, in your opinion, that is almost like a mandatory criteria for a product these days to for it to have a chance to be successful, that it, it has to solve a problem. It can't just be like, it tastes good and it's another choice. Like it has to really address an issue that will solve something in the consumer's life. So spot on, Susan. You are. It's the ticket. You know, it's sort of the entry card. You must be solving something or do something. For the first time, I'm seeing children's foods because people don't only want good food for themselves and just some cheese crackers for their kids. They want well-made crackers, well-made foods that they know their kids will like. But what they're also creating is what's called a value customer. Teach them when they are young and they will be more mindful more discerning about how they eat and they will only seek the best. And these people have figured that part out. And so they're coming in with solutions for parents who want good food, for especially for finicky children, but food that's also good for them and they can afford it. You can find it here. You know, it's so interesting you mentioned that. I attended the Fancy New York Pitch Slam last yes. night, uh, hosted by SFA National New York. And there, one of the finalists was a company that was uh, making, uh, uh, I think it was baby food. Uh, the, the founder had a, a child, a son, a young son, couldn't, um, couldn't eat very well. He developed a line of not just baby food, clean, um, very diverse in flavor, using cumin, avocado oil, chickpea, um, introducing those flavors from a young age. And again, certified organic, um, clean non-GMO, you know, hitting all of those labels. That actually leads me to another question for you, Kanta. A lot of products with a lot of those labels, yes. you know, B Corp certified, <laughs> USDA, you know, clean, low FODMAP, that's another thing that yeah. I'm seeing. I mean, Kanta, is that another thing, another um, requirement uh, so to speak, for products these days, they got to get those labels down. Do you think consumers really do care about that? So labels do a very unique thing. They act like beacons to attract customers. So when a harried mom or dad, or even grandma for that matter, is shopping, he or she does not have the time to sit and read labels or sit and try and figure out what the ingredients are. But those front of pack little labels, little you know icons, very quickly tell them, what they are looking for and what is good for their child. And as you said, solve their problem. So some of these labels go a long way. FODMAP. In our stressful lives today, more than not, and much more in an unprecedented way, are struggling with digestive issues. Not everybody wants a probiotic or a prebiotic or even a postbiotic in every food. But what they want is to make sure that what they're eating will not make them uncomfortable. And some of them have been fortunate to figure out what irritates them or stresses them. That FODMAP label, a little, little piece, goes a long way, especially for moms with children who really struggle and who cannot articulate what's wrong. So food now has gone back to the old fashioned way of, as you said, cumin, you know, uh, pepper, it's various kinds of salts. Even the types of ingredients and condiments that are used are used not only to flavor them, but to assure them that they will also feel good after they've eaten it. And that's an important thing. Mm, I love what you brought up, flavors. Uh, flavors getting more diverse. Um, is that something that you're seeing um, an uptick of at the show this year or this year in general? Flavors? condiments you know talk to us about about that kind of area right there so we all like food but we like our food to be varied you know uh, humans are the only animals that want variety in their food think about it 
every other creature eats the same thing day in, day out and cannot manage to change the flavor, maybe because it's riper or more putrefied, <laughs> but not humans. Humans want a different, uh, you know, a, a variety at the same meal. So we have cultures that have 18 different things on the same plate. And used to be that this food scientists and the food processing industry figured that out and brought some unique flavors to up this game. But what we see here is going back to the basics and using ingredients to provide the flavor. So just take ginger or take cumin. Cumin as is, roasted or, or you know, um, separated where only the inside part is used. Each one of them gives a different note. As I was walking in, I saw a young fellow hand me a little cumin jar and he said, just smell it. This is what we strive for. Now think of it in your yogurt. So here in the US, we are still eating sweet yogurt because it's a new product for us. But the rest of the world eats yogurt with savory inclusions. And it's for a good reason. It's the pleasure, enjoyment, but most of all for the health of it. The health of it is coming clear, loud and strong at this show. Right, right. Kanta, you know, it's so interesting what you're mentioning. I actually remember having a conversation with a friend of mine in a cab the other night. She's uh, of Mexican descent, just speaking about mango, how she misses mango street food, but they don't serve it, you know, as a dessert. They put, they put salt and chili. And tahin. Um, and yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And then actually, I'm uh, by, by background of Korean, uh, a tomato is a fruit. They don't put it, you know, savory unless they're eating a Western influence dish. It's sprinkled with a little sugar. It's eaten after dinner. Yes. Um, that's That's been a staple after dinner oh, treat yes. in many Korean households. So um, I'm really resonating with what you said. I'm really also interested, Kanta, in what you say you do in your line of work, um, really scrutinizing. Yes. Um, it seems like that, that like level, providing a level of accountability yes. um, to, to products, ingredients. Can you talk to us more about that? Thank you for asking that. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, there are two sides to what I do. I do a lot of work with food safety. And I used to do investigative reporting for CBS, the television show in Chicago. So it was never a good idea to walk into a restaurant with me because the staff would see me and assume I'm finding something wrong and would scatter. Or they'd hold up the glass and go and clean it up you know, for me. Not a good thing to do. But otherwise, yes, I look at food and I look at the science behind it. And I look at how do we help our industry, whether they are making mainstream food products or these upcycled or special artisanal products that are looking at ingredients from very unique places, how do we make sure that they are good for you, good for the planet, and also really fun to eat? You know, so that's an important point. So as a food scientist, I'm here looking for products that I would like, that my you know, community, my friends, my family would like, and also looking for products that will actually grow up to become, become a much better, you know, a staple in somebody's kitchen or in the retail store. So to, soothe, to see, this is like a nursery for me. I'm coming to spot out the little plants to see which one will grow in my backyard and which one will provide fruit and shade to the rest of the world. Fascinating. I love it, Kanta. Unfortunately, um, we're, we're running out of time. But final question, um, what is a product or product category that you are all over right now? I know you were mentioning ginger earlier. Is that a flavor you're into or is there something else in particular um, that you're, you know, you're really loving? Tell us. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Huge presence right Huge now. presence. And they're bringing it in from different parts of the world and they're learning how to use it and they're learning how to talk about it. So it's not just here's a mushroom crisp, but here's a mushroom crisp that is perfect at 2.30 in the afternoon so you don't need an energy drink. You know, so it tells you what to do. Here's a mushroom perfect to calm you down and de-stress you. Also looking at different in honeys. Honey is hot, but here is honey in different formats and they also tell you how it's safe for you and safe for the planet. So while we have all these analogs out there, there are companies here that are talking about ingredients that are actually good for you 
and your soul. That I like. So I'm looking for coffee, chocolate. I love coffee mm. and alternates. Chocolate. The amount of chocolate you see here, you do not get in the grocery store. That's special. Tea. And of course, ginger, mushroom, and chilies. Chilies. All the nuanced condiments, spicy, wonderful. Wonderful. Love it. Thank you so much for your insights. Kanta Shalke, SFA Trendspotter, and you are a Corvus Blue LLC in Chicago. Kanta, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Susan. You and Brian do a fantastic work. I love reading and seeing everything. For me to be on your show is an honor. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So kind. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we're going to turn it over now to Ron Tanner, who's over at the International Pavilion. And I would love for Ron to take it away and, and, and show us what he's got. Well, thank you very much, Susan. We're here in the international area with one of the biggest and long-time um, exhibitors at the fancy food show foods from spain um we've got jeff shaw who's a director of foods from spain so jeff let me know um how many companies do you have here and what type of products are they showing hello thank you for having us here this year we have 84 companies it's the most companies we've ever had at the fancy food show the fancy food show for us is of the key shows in the united states clearly we have many imported products and we see this show as a doorway into the U.S. It's where a lot of the companies have first contact with the U.S. market. They get to meet distributors, clients, retailers, and they get a bit of a feel sometimes for the potential of the product. We have a combination, I would say, an average year, anything between 40, 50 percent companies who have first come to the market. And then we have others that have been with us for you know, 20 plus years coming to the show. Now, I see you have the companies divided a little bit by regions. Um, have you done that for a long time? And what do you feel the, are the advantages of that? Yes, that's a very, very, very good observation. That partly reflects really the way that probably Spain looks at itself and also some of the way that we as an institution work with those regions. Uh, so you look at Spain as a country, but we're also made up of regions just like the U.S. is made up of states. So it would be like Texas wanting to have all the Texan companies together. Well, in our case, it's similar. We have Castilla, Leon, Galicia. They want their companies to be together. Three really that we presented in the group them. And just, are the culinary traditions different in each region? I would say that they are. Probably all of them everywhere. Um, some of the differences in the regions and the different foods that they have. That's a great question. Yes. Uh, there's some things like in the U.S., you know, we have hamburgers everywhere, and we also have, you know, a bit of brisket in the South. In the case of Spain, I would say one way of looking at it, they are clear traditions. Typically, the North stews, the center of the country grills, and the South fries. So just in those traditions, you begin to see that the way that they look at food is somewhat different. And there are definitely regionalities in terms of vegetables that are grown, the techniques that are applied. So that, that's the kind of general thing. And what do, what's going on behind us here? I was going to skip doing the interview so I could sit down and have some of these great products. Um, but what is the purpose and um, what are you serving here? Yes, uh, right now we're doing what we call an inspired Spanish breakfast. It's going to be brunch time, so we're, you know, we're taking a little bit of liberty. We show off some of the gastronomy and importantly some of the ingredients that we're showing off in the pavilion and how they can function in a, in a gastronomic context. Well, Jeff, thank you very much. We're going to go visit some of your exhibitors now. We really appreciate your time. And I think we'll go over to this road. There's no seat left from a person, but maybe you can go a little bit later this afternoon. Hello. Hello, we're here with Carlos. Carlos, who owns a um, Serrano Espinol company. Um, tell us a little bit about, about your product. Tell us a little bit about your company, and tell us why you like being at the Fancy Food Show. We are an association of uh, exporters uh, from Spain. We are 24 uh, companies, producers. And what we do is we select the best, the top Serranos 
the top seller hands from the portfolio. Um, we label them with our quality seal and we, we provide marketing and support and um, promotional services to, to, to their stakeholders. Uh, this is what we do. Um, yeah, this is our second time here. Yeah, I think it's a very great fair, a very great opportunity for us to, to let the market understand and to create awareness about our quality seal, our project. I know it's great quality ham. You know, everybody knows that. Could you show us a little bit? Or I'm not sure you want to do the slicing, but um, show us how you can do that. So. Yeah, we have uh, Ann Carver here. Uh, her name is Sulima. Uh, top one, this is a craft, and what she's doing is she's trying to uh, work carve thin slices. It has to be like two ounces one, five grams, more or less. Um, the trick here is to, to, to have it uh, not too thick, just a thin slice to, 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 for a good bite and to, to have the, all the tenderness and all the flavor of the, of the ham. And what she's doing, she's carving out of uh, the, what we call the maza. It's the maza, isn't it? Uh, contra. Ah, babilla. Babilla. Uh, babilla. What we call babilla, which is a tender, a tender part of the, of the, of the serrano ham. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a good time for the rest of the show. Just a few more hours to go. Um, but thank you very much for being here. We're going to be walking here. You can see 84 companies here in the Spanish pavilion. Um, lots of different olive oil, lots of cheeses, a lot of different products that are here. And one of the products, um, which is really um, getting a lot of increased popularity in the United States, is tinned fish or canned fish. Um, a lot of that comes from the Mediterranean, obviously. And we're going to be visiting a company here that is one of the leaders in Spain in the, in the fish. So we're heading over here to the Conservas Club. Sorry, my Spanish isn't very good at all. I'll let them tell you. Um, so hi. Hi, here, Ron Tanner with Food Institute. Uh, tell us a little bit about your product and um, you know, why you're in the United States and what you're looking to do here. Yeah, well, uh, we, have, uh, we are a company from uh, Spain, from Galicia. Um, we, are, we have a premium preserved uh, seafood. Uh, as you can see, my, my colleague Santiago uh, is opening one of our, of our uh, top selling products, is the little the baby sardines in olive oil. Um, well, we do a, a premium product of uh, seafood. And uh, well, we are uh, we are in the U.S. because for us it's a very important market. We have two brands. One is Ramon Peña that is uh, was founded in 1920. Um, it's like uh, or uh, has a more uh, classical uh, image. Um, another new brand uh, called La Brucula, uh, also top quality with a more new image, a more fresh uh, jam image, but both brands are uh, like top quality products. Um, uh, we have uh, a big uh, range of products, a big variety of products. Uh, mm, we have uh, like fish, we have uh, sardines, we have uh, tuna, uh, anchovies, and then uh, uh, from Galicia, the uh, specialty from Galicia are the uh, like the seafood uh, like uh, mussels, not fish, but seafood, you know, uh, and of, of very good quality because of the estuaries of Galicia. Uh, so products like mussels, razor clams, cockles, uh, th those are products that are really appreciated. Octopus as well from Galicia. Um, well, we, we try to uh, give a wide range of products of top quality. Uh, um, that's uh, a little bit or or aim, you know, to try to offer uh, the best of Spain, uh, of for fish and of or for seafood here in the U.S. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. I'm not sure I've seen baby sardines that small, but I, I know that tin fish is catching on very big in the United States. Um, you're seeing it even in restaurants. Some fancy restaurants will, your appetizer, they just put one of your cans out and they open it for you, you know, and give you a little olive oil. To put on it, so. 
pretty happy with the with the like with our distributors and how the sales are going in the U.S. Um, yeah, they tell them there is like a it's a, like a, a fashion is is fashionable and it's a, like people are getting more interest in the in the team products in the in the pressed seafood and uh, here in the U.S. And well, we hope uh, this interest is keep growing, you know, and, and we are. Uh, uh, and we can be able to offer to keep offering these products, you know. Well, thank you very much. And who knows? We're learning here at the Fancy Food Show that baby sardines are becoming fashionable. So that's a great thing to know. Lots of great products here in Spain. Thank you very much. And if you're still at the show, come visit the Spanish Pavilion. 84 companies with great products for you to try and sample and buy if you're a buyer. So much, Ron Tanner. Um, always a pleasure with um, the on the ground coverage, um, a really uh, popular segment of the show that we are really proud of. Um, and I want to move on to another segment that I'm thrilled to do. As we have promised, we have here the winners of the Sophie Award new product of the year and product of the year i welcome ken gordon of mochi doki and you. steve muir of lewis road nice to be here gentlemen congratulations thank you on so your much win. thank you so much oh, we're so just so excited, excited very yes, much. Yeah. Thrilling. <laughs> it's like i know it's been described as the oscars of the food industry <laughs> so i mean i just i i love that you know they really made it into like a production so that the the emotions you know you guys could really savor the win at the uh, show yes, and so yeah definitely. so let's start with you ken how, how are you feeling i mean i'm feeling incredible you know I, I i was confident coming into the show because our product was gaining so much traction in terms of taste and texture um and when we um submitted it for the initial product category of frozen we won and we were just thrilled to death. Um, and then uh, to have it eventually be the best in show was even the, the icing on the cake. Well, yes, Steve, how about you? Yeah, likewise, as Ken said, I was I was confident coming in because I think we've got a beautiful product. Um, and I, I love the fact that just two simple ingredients can be recognized as, as product of the year, you know, and it's just about how it's farmed and how it's made. And it's nice to see a, a very simple product being recognized like this. Yeah, so, uh, but I, I'm a lot more excited than I thought I would be. I've got to tell you, that. it's fantastic, you know? As you should. Yeah, it's Great. really, really Cool. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's keep the mic with you. Uh, let's keep the mic sure. with you, Steve, because I want to hear from you. So tell us, mm -hmm. tell us about Lewis Road Creamery. You've got a beautiful looking box right there. Yeah, yes. look, without doubt, I think Lewis Road Creamery is the, the best quality butter coming out of New Zealand. Um, we, it comes from just nine farms in New Zealand, so it's fully traceable. Uh, they're on the Waikato area, which is in the central northern part of the, or central North Island, I should say. Um, and our farms are regeneratively farmed. Uh, and most importantly for me is that our cattle are on pasture 365 days a year so they're never indoors they're never in barns or pens in any way they're never tethered they just graze freely on on open pasture um, and because our soil is very healthy the grass is very nutritious and the cows have a great diet you know and it's it just comes through in the quality and the taste and the texture of the butter you know so it's just uh, again all the work is done on the farms and they just do a beautiful job Absolutely. Mm. have you named all the cows <laughs> there's, a, there's a few cows to name but you know what the farmers probably have yeah i'm sure yeah. they take such good care they really do. Yes, yeah, and they're all wonderful. family owned farms, you know. So, again, it's just, it's just a, a very it's a beautiful company, you know. I'm just a schmuck up here selling the product, <laughs> you know, but it's all the work is done on the farms. So it's, it really is the truth. Yeah. All right, Ken, let's hear it from you. What is Mochi Doki? I mean, Mochi Doki, we started in 2015 and uh, we started um, selling our product initially to the best restaurants throughout the, the country Zuma, Nobu, Tao, Sushi Samba, Blue Ribbon Sushi. We knew how to. We had a great product. We listened to chefs, um, and our whole philosophy was a premium product with premium ingredients for a premium experience. Um, and you know, we use only natural ingredients uh, from our purees, paste, powders. Um, our our mochi is uh, is colored with only natural ingredients. Um, the people who have this is wonderful packaging uh, that allows it to be um, preserved. Uh, before it's eaten and being, being taken out nicely from the packaging. Um, and it's just been a success since we launched it. 
That's great. So yeah. you said you launched in 2015. Yes, you said? that is correct. Okay, so it's been about um, eight years yes. now. Um, so tell me, what is one success that you're very proud of, and one challenge that you face that you're maybe you're you're proud that you've overcome, or one challenge that you continue to be focused on to overcome? Well, I mean, one success that we're very proud of is is clearly, and I'm sure people have said this to you, working through COVID and then being even more successful past that. And we had just opened a store uh, just before COVID had hit the day before uh, in Soho. Uh, that was our brick and mortar store. And, um, you know, uh, not only did we thrive, but we really, uh, not only did we survive, but we really thrived beyond that. So it's it's been really great. Um, and challenges when it comes to mochi, mochi ice cream, uh, you're always making mistakes and you're always learning from your mistakes. And uh, we felt that, you know, unless you're making mistakes and learning from them, you're not going to improve. And we've, we've made all the mistakes we can, and now we are, uh, are just zooming in, 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 med- in, in speed. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Steve, what about you? Biggest success, biggest challenge? Tell us sure. your past. Look, I think the biggest success for me is the response I see from consumers when I'm in stores demoing product or when we're doing events like this. And, and I'm not being arrogant about this, but when people try our butter, they genuinely say it's the best butter that they've ever tasted. You know, so in my mind, that is just the, the, the biggest success we could ask for. And, and that is also reflected in the same store sales growth that we have. You know, we're, we're certainly not the biggest brand in the market. We're far from it. But our same store sales and the loyalty we're getting from our customers is, I think, you know, our number one success. Yeah. Um, Challenge-wise, you know, we're launching a premium quality butter into a category that is very competitive, you know, so we can only get a very small amount of shelf space typically. So, you know, it's challenging to secure that shelf space and then obviously challenging to make sure that our, our velocity uh, justifies us maintaining it. Um, but again, it's all about just customers trying it and, uh, and then getting that loyalty. Yeah, letting the product speak for itself. Yeah, that's like giving exactly. up is not an option. Nope. That's what nope. I learned nope. from Arnold Schwarzenegger in the documentary. <laughs> Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, and the producer <laughs> with the off camera, he was like, well, what about giving up? And Arnold's like, well, that was never part of my plan. Right. There you go. Yeah, we're here <laughs> Say what long. you will about the man, but he had a very interesting uh, mentality about yeah. things. Okay, so Steve, tell me, what is it in the future for Lewis Road Premium? Look, for the next foreseeable future, we're still going to focus on expanding distribution of our salted and our unsalted um, 10 stars certified values butter because that is just what sets us apart from every other butter in the in the category um, in New Zealand the farming arm of our business is called Southern Pastures and it's you know I, I believe they have the best farming practices in the country um, so we certainly have the opportunity to introduce additional dairy related products so you know certainly watch the space there's going to be additional Lewis Road Creamery branded items um, throughout the stores but right now for the foreseeable future we just really need to make sure that we double down on that butter and make sure that we expand our distribution as, as much as we can absolutely yeah. And what about you, Steve? What's in the future for Mochi? Mochi? I, I, I mean, sorry, Ken. It's all right. No worries. <laughs> I, I can go by Steve now. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, we, we have a, a lot of uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us and, and a lot of exciting things in the future. I mean, we're going to stick to our commitment of, of sourcing the best ingredients, um, having the best experience for the customer, um, and really, really producing the best product out there. Um, we'll probably be adding more flavors somewhere down the road. Um, but right now we have eight flavors that go from, you know, traditional uh, Japanese um, flavors like green tea and 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 uh, purple sweet potato to the exotic flavors uh, like um, lychee and uh, and mango and so on. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, this this flavor right passion, here, passion, passion fruit, fruit. is ensure yeah. a very popular dessert. Very great product. Two great products right here: mochi doki, Lewis Road Creamery. Let's make sure we got it. We have a yeah. nice, a nice yeah. shot right here. <laughs> Sorry, I got to cover your faces. <laughs> Ken Gordon of Mochi Doki, Steve Muir of Lewis Road Creamery, 2023 Sophie Award winners, nice. new product of the year, product yes. of the Come year, <laughs> mochidoki.com. That's right. LewisRoadCreamery.com. Check it out, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Congratulations you so on the win. Good, good, good. Thank you so much. All right, and that. That's it. That wraps it up for the 2023 67th annual Summer Fancy Food Show right here in New York City, right here at the Javits Center. I am Susan Choi. I have been your host this live stream. Don't forget to check out foodinstitute.com for all of your food and beverage industry new needs, specialtyfood.com for all of your specialty food association education promotional needs, and also generous Thank you so much. Big thanks to our platinum sponsor, Atalanta Corporation, your number one source for specialty imported goods, atalantacorp.com. 
This has been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Stay tuned for the next live stream show um, coming to you in winter, um, I think in Vegas, in 2024. But this is a wrap for now. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Have a great day. Take care.